Hello, and welcome to Supply Chain Next. I'm your host, Richard Donaldson. Join me as we explore the ongoing evolution of supply chain, from the challenges practitioners face every day to the ongoing digital transformation of the entire value network. And welcome to the next episode of Supply Chain Next. And I am thrilled today to have Jill Robbins on with us, uh, a procurement uh, expert extraordinaire. And we're going to get into that. And uh, welcome, Jill. Thank you, Richard. Happy to be here. Oh, great. Awesome. Well, I, you know what? Let's just jump right in. I would love to start uh, certainly getting into your background. And you know, you've had a, a, an amazing career up to date. So would love to hear you in your own words. Tell us a little bit about kind of how you got into where, you know, procurement, if you want to call it that, and kind of walk through the journey of, of where you are, you know, what got you to today. Yeah. So I didn't wake up and say, I want to be in procurement. Um, right. <laughs> um, you know, it kind of happened organically. Um, I happened to actually be working in an IT department at a large healthcare conglomerate oh. um, doing RFPs and supplier relationship management. So, um, this was, you know, back in the day where businesses were, you know, doing their own sourcing, um, if you will. So I was in that role for just under a year. And then they outsourced our department to um, Deloitte. Mm. And at that point in my career, I'd already had some bumps. And I said, hey, I really don't want to be a consultant right now. So I went to Ingersoll Rand um, and was a sourcing analyst there. Um, working in global strategic sourcing, had a great boss, um, really groomed me, mentored me, grew into a senior category manager role. So, um, you know, I, I was an analyst, but um, I always see the big picture. So I saw a lot of opportunities, proved myself, um, moved up through the ranks. Um, so that's really how I, I, I got in you know, to procurement, fell in love, found out I'm a hell of a negotiator. Um, I enjoy it. I like working with suppliers. Um, and I like connecting fragmented pieces that exist in organizations. Yeah, it makes, makes sense. And let me ask you a question because you use a term and, and you called it strategic sourcing. Yeah. And if I roll the clock back, that was, oh goodness, I mean, it was a little while ago, right? Uh, Ingersoll ran. Yeah. And yet that term is now bubbling back up again today, yes. right? People are kind of thinking, oh, procurement's becoming strategic sourcing. So I'm very curious why you use that term for that position back then and what was strategic about that in the context of then versus, say, how people are starting to think about procurement evolving to strategic sourcing now. It's funny, Richard, you asked that question. I really, think <laughs> <laughs> what I see, right? I mean, it, it, it's kind of like the elephant in the room. Um, it, some industries, you know, call procurement global strategic sourcing, strategic sourcing. Um, others still have this view of it being this tactical procurement or mm -hmm. you're my order taker. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like it's coming back around because procurement is more than just taking an order right. um, and negotiating a contract, working with a supplier. Um, yep. No matter how you slice it, um, you know, it, and depending on which industry you're in, you know, I, I find, you know, the healthcare industry, pharmaceuticals really say procurement and more advanced and tighter margin companies. Um, tend to say strategic sourcing. That is my two cents. That is my observation in my twenty yeah. plus years. Um, yeah, yeah. So. No, and that makes sense. And, and we're going to come. We're going to come. We're going to come back to that. That's a good, good, good overview. But let's let's keep walking through. So Ingersoll Rand led to a couple other what appears mm -hmm. to be fairly big, you know, parts of your sort of career development. And part of the reasons I'm asking this is, yeah. uh, you know, one you know, you've had a great career. So a lot of people who listen to this are also kind of trying to get an idea of like, how do I get into procurement? How do, especially in today's world, right? I mean, supply chain and procurement is such a hot topic. Yeah. People are very curious as to like how you developed your own career to get to where you are today. So let's walk through a little bit of those two kind of brand name company. Well, Ingersoll Rand's a bad brand name company, but the next couple sound like some pretty big ones as well too. Yep. So from Ingersoll Rand, I was there for just over three years, um, did quite a lot of traveling, you know, supported plant sites, business units, um, they're a large industrial conglomerate, um, 
And at that point in my career, um, worked with a lot of guys, love working with men. Um, the management was all guys. And I said, hey, if I want to move up, I better kind of diversify and look elsewhere. Um, so I knew someone who went to Eli Lilly and Company, which was, you know, a, a large employer um, mm-hmm. in Indiana. And then I, I started in R&D um, mm-hmm. procurement there. So was sourcing clinical trials, regulatory, really learned the ropes. Um, it was a good place for me to start to understand the business and how it operates in the backbone. Um, quickly moved into IT sourcing. I ran, you know, purchase to pay operations. So it was kind of just a snowball of mm-hmm. various experiences um, at Eli Lilly and Company. Spent some time in Lean Six Sigma, spent time in business development. Um, procurement reported up through finance. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to continue to progress, Um, I was told you need a core finance role um, if you want to, you know, get to upper levels of management. So that's why I took a role in business development um, in corporate finance investment banking. Um, Richard, it's not something I ever saw myself Mm -hmm. doing. Um, Financial modeling. um, I was not an accountant. Um, I, at that point in time, I lived in Excel hell. I hated my life, but what it taught me was, um, how all the pieces fit together, you know, looking at target assets, you know, looking at mergers and acquisitions. Um, and that's where I got my entrepreneurial bug and my Mm -hmm. husband and I became entrepreneurs, Mm -hmm. um, during that time because I understood, okay, here's how you value businesses. Um, So that's when we opened a few Sky Zone indoor trampoline parks. I stayed in the corporate world. Um, My husband's an attorney. He ran those businesses. Um, From there, I went into Lean Six Sigma, did some supplier master data transformation. Um, I had my son. uh, Mm -hmm. And then I went to Alanco Animal Health. Um, So, you know, I've built procurement teams. I've transformed procurement teams at Alanco. Um, they had been a division of Lilly for over 60 years. Mm-hmm. Um, while I was there, they IPO'd. Um, so I built an indirect procurement team from the ground up. I had people reporting to, to me on every continent. Um, you know, we had to implement our own ERP system. We really were starting over from scratch. Um, right. and we had an opportunity to really brand procurement um, as being a trusted advisor versus someone you need to go talk to before you engage with a supplier or before you, you know, enter a purchase order request or, you know, whatever the brand is at, you know, name your your fortune 500 company. Um, everyone's got a brand. And so it, it was a lot of fun. Um, and we made a ton of progress. We were able to consolidate the supply base, um, you know, do a lot of great things and just kind of lift up some rocks that mm-hmm. have been lifted um, yeah. in many years just because, you know, there were other priorities. Totally understand. And well, so, so great, great overview. And the thing that jumps out of me right away is, and I think a lot of people would like to hear about is you kind of span already in your career, you know, major companies, but across multiple industries, right? Ingersoll ran probably a little bit more heavy machinery, Eli Lilly Pharmaceuticals, and you get into a personal, even trampoline style business, right? Um, which sounds, but it's still, there's a lot that goes into that. Yep. And then kind of your next adventure, you know, kind of maybe sorted back touching into pharmaceutical, but you span multiple industries. So what's the consistency that you've seen through that as you reflect on that? What have you, what have you seen? Because procurement, is a function kind of like finance. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I do procurement for healthcare. I do procurement for technology. They're different, but I don't think they are. And I think you've probably lived that. So I'd love to hear your response to that. You know, what do you think? Yeah. How do you talk to people about that? Yeah, they're not. Yeah. And, you know, I coach and mentor a lot of um, individuals. Um, I've had, you know, I'd say a different lens than maybe the traditional Mm -hmm. kind of procurement professional has. Um, I, I think and act like an owner and I, what I coach and what I say often is there is no better seat in the house 
than sitting in a procurement or supply chain role. Um, you have mm-hmm. eyes across the business and especially mm-hmm. on the indirect side that mm-hmm. really even finance doesn't have because you right. see how how the business is thinking, what the business is thinking. You can talk to customers um, in many cases when you're supporting sales and marketing, you can hear their perspective. Um, so, you know, I would say don't conform to a department that you sit in. Think across the mm-hmm. value t- chain, take the blinders off um, because many suppliers are used in a number of different departments in a number of different ways um, across multiple categories. Um, and the sooner you realize that, the better off you are. And what I've learned as well, some of your largest suppliers are can be some of your largest customers. Yep. Um, so that data um, and having that availability and looking at those contracts and leveraging on the buy side and the sell side is hypercritical. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can tell you, I got a lot of pushback um, <laughs> in highlighting um, some of the opportunities. Well, we want to do it this way. Um, we've never done it that way, right? Um, we're comfortable, you know, with this. And it's like, okay, well, are you comfortable giving away margin? Right. Um, you know, do you want to run the business more efficiently? Um, so really- seems like it seems like obvious questions that you're asking that you think would be almost rhetorical. But I think the phrase you just said in there that that I want to highlight is this is the way we've always done it. And, you know, that mold has to, I think it's being shattered right now, you know, in the midst of what we're living uh, and was in the, in the process of being shattered. So, but, but let me go back to, because there's a couple of things in here that I just want to peel out of this, right? So there's your own kind of, you know, natural inclination as an entrepreneur, someone who's self-driven and motivated, burn and expand and see the whole business. But coupled with that, you took a finance role that really gave you that foundation, you know, knowledge base lexicon with which to communicate with people, you know, and give you kind of a holistic view of the business. So it's, it's, you kind of did both simultaneously where I'm going with this is, you know, what, what do you think has made you kind of do that? Because that is kind of the role that procurement strategic sourcing people should be thinking about today. It's not an order taking function. It's actually one of the most strategic positions in the business that allows you, as you put it, a view of the whole business that's fairly unique. Like what, what got you to see that before what I think a lot of other people have actually seen? They're starting to today, but you were kind of ahead of the game. Yeah, you know, I'd say, Richard, I, I'm very curious by nature. And, um, you know, the role I had in um, being a Lean Six Sigma black belt dissecting um, supplier data. So when I was at Eli Lilly and company, you know, working with, Um, close to 10,000 suppliers, and they had a very um, linear data set versus parent-child relationships. Um, Mm -hmm. So suppliers were managing um, the company versus procurement managing or the business managing those suppliers. So suppliers knew more about what was going on than Mm -hmm. procurement did or Mm -hmm. Um, relationship managers. That's a huge problem. Okay. So you really, when you're spending um, billions of dollars, you you really need to understand where that's going, um, how it's being optimized, what that contract compliance looks like. And as I start dissecting that, that became part of my DNA. So every role I had after that, I would dissect, you know, the category the supplier, look across Mm -hmm. the entire value chain and, you know, look at, you know, are we using this supplier here? Why are we using, you know, them here in this capacity? Um, How accurate is that data? Um, And that's another thing you, you trust, but verify. Um, And I think that's a problem that exists today. And some of the supply chain breakdowns we've seen in the last two years are because, data is garbage um, in a lot of these very large companies. Um, So you really need to govern um, proactively on the front end and have that continuous cleansing going on so you can trust where things are at. You know what your payment terms are. You know what your SLAs are, what your delivery terms are. Um, And companies have learned the hard way 
um, yeah. in many yeah. cases. Well, let me let me double click into that too, because again, I, there's just such nuggets of gold in here. But you, you're, you're touching around kind of, I think, the core issue or pro- one of the core problems within current supply chains procurement teams today, which is this kind of lack of data. Right, you, you had, were inclined to go find it and connect dots between different data sources, yeah. right? But yeah. the question really is, what did you see? What did you see as the big inhibitor or barrier as to why that data wasn't all together? And then, as an outcome of once the data was put together, and you kind of touched on these as well, like what were the benefits that you saw? And you kind of highlighted some of those. But I mean, the business goes into like optimization overdrive when they start putting all this data together and making yeah. sure it's available, right? So yeah. start with start with kind of the, you know, what, what what was the major stumbling box you saw in your experience, you know, the commonalities between different companies? Because I think there's pretty common themes as to why yeah. this isn't done more normally. Yeah, so, you know, finance looks at reconciling the books and they look at from a GL perspective. Um, the business is looking at it from a budget perspective. Am I operating within my budget? Um, and again, they have high level kind of GL targets um, that they're operating. I have money here that I can spend. I have money there. And then you've got supply chain, strategic sourcing, procurement, whatever you want to call it, um, operating from an external mindset in a category. So how is this spend categorized in the marketplace? Um, so you've got these different groups that usually are just, you know, they're, they're passing in the, in the night um, and they're not right. looking at how they can cohesively pull all of this together. Um, so that's the number one problem. The number two problem is, mm-hmm. is the data right? So is the rec entered right? Is the GL correct? Is the category, whatever you want to call it, correct? Right. Is the right. industry correct of the supplier? Um, so, so many companies, you know, are relying on their internal accounts payable team to set suppliers up. It's like, well, the supplier knows their data and their categories and what they're doing better than an internal accounts payable person. So there, it's riddled with different um, issues from a data integrity perspective. But I'd say that's the baseline. Um, as to why there are disconnects um, right. and missed opportunities. And did you see, because you work with some pretty big companies, and again, I'm going to kind of highlight the yeah. highlight what I think is the, one of the central themes that we're seeing in supply chain optimization today is the sort of tools identification and harmonization of tools. But were there common tools that were just not connected across these different departments? I mean, I, I'm yeah, I, I see you laughing already because I know this is somewhat of a rhetorical question, but but talk yeah. about your experience when you saw that nightmare. There's no golden ticket, Richard. Yeah. I mean, everyone thinks, okay, if I sink, you know, X tens of millions of dollars into name your ERP system, you know, Oracle, SAP, whatever, they are going to fix all my problems. They have an MDM module. They have this wrong. You know, your processes, your you know, governance, your discipline has to support that. Um, Systems don't fix um, bad behavior or decades of, you know, broken internal processes. It just does not happen. Um, That's what those guys sell. Mm -hmm. Um, And then people realize the hard way, well, then I've got to hire, you know, name your marquee consulting firm to come in and then implement or come in and reconfigure because this is not telling me what I thought it was going to tell me or what, you know, the bill of goods I was sold on this. Um, So it's, it's really a tangled web and it's a house of cards, frankly, from a systems perspective. Um, and you have to be very, very um, intentional from an architecture perspective about defining what metadata needs to connect. How does that metadata need to be governed? What are the outcomes I'm looking for? So really starting with the end in mind is, I, I can't emphasize it enough. And so often these large you know, projects and transformational projects They think, okay, well, if I just implement this, I'll get this. Mm -hmm. Well, is this really going to 
you know, give you that proactive view. Everything is always, you know, backwards looking. And even the backwards looking, some, like I said, you can't trust um, it more than, <laughs> I don't even want to say a percentage, but um, there are huge errors um, in even what you're looking at. Yeah, absolutely. So, so now let's kind of bring that forward a little bit. So you kind of going through this progression, attain some pretty senior level status, and then now you've morphed into like, okay, I've got my experience. Now you're going to start consulting back to these companies. So take take us through into sort of how, because this is sort of the leading into what we've developed here as the foundation. How yeah. are you approaching your consulting with the firms now, given these experiences? Like, what are you looking at? What's the common theme you approach procurement or supply chain teams now, given kind of what you've experienced yourself? Yep. So I, I do kind of two angles of consulting. So I am helping um, pharma biotech companies um, from a procurement perspective, either they've, you know, raised a lot of capital, um, they recently went public, but they don't have a formal procurement team. Um, and I help them build the right policies, build the right framework, the technology we talked about, you know, getting all of those pieces, Mm -hmm. um, lined up, you know, through matchbook is the company and we help execute RFPs, um, you know, from a clinical R&D perspective with HR. So, you know, we are an outsourced procurement department with, you know, decades of experience. So we bring a wealth of knowledge and we can just jump in and hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. Um, The other angle of my consulting business. So with Business Fierce, I teach companies who are selling to and through Um, enterprise, supply chain, and procurement organizations, how to do so effectively, speak their language, doing your homework, Mm -hmm. understanding what the the priorities are, not just cold selling, not just selling what you sold to the last um, customer. So really thinking through what it means, giving them a playbook Mm -hmm. and making them procurement insiders. Um, is what I do, teaching them how to negotiate. This is how procurement is negotiating with you. Are you preparing in the same manner? Mm -hmm. Um, Or are you giving away too much margin? Mm -hmm. Um, Also helping them fine tune their responses when they get, you know, a litany of RFPs. Um, How to prioritize? Should I be responding to all of these RFPs? How should I be responding? How do I stand out from my competition? So that's what I'm doing, um, you know, with business spheres. I'm also, I'm speaking at a lot of sales kickoff meetings. I, I run breakout sessions, um, based on industry verticals, coaching them on, you know, what's important to these different Mm -hmm. industries. What are the buzzwords? Um, you know, how to cultivate that relationship. Um, so procurement is not hated because I, so many of my customers avoided procurement for years and decades and their chief revenue officer, their, you know, sales director, they tell me to avoid procurement. Um, That's the number one mistake because you may win one or two deals, but if you want to be a preferred supplier, if you want to be given every opportunity in this space to competitively bid on, then you need to make friends with procurement um, quickly. Um, and become their their trusted advisor. And you're not going to win every deal, um, but when you're their trusted advisor, you can say, hey, we're not best here, but you need to go talk to my buddy over here. Um, So so that's kind of the the two angles. Um, And then we we also have a warehousing business um, and a cryotherapy business. So we we're kind of serial entrepreneurs. Yeah. I was going to say, it's quite the gammon here. I was making, yeah. ma- making light of the fact that we might get into wheatgrass and aliens, but uh, you bring out yeah, cryotherapy, yeah. cryotherapy all of a sudden yeah. and uh, <laughs> high tech. So that's awesome. Well, let me, okay. So let me, let me dive into a little bit of, of now you, you kind of referenced this earlier, but procurement is and often has been thought of it as a standalone. Right, mm-hmm. but it's really a part of a bigger organization, which is supply chain. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about your perception of how procurement and supply chain are kind of reintroducing themselves as one cohesive unit today versus kind of separate entities. Yeah. Yes. I think, you know, 
historically, you know, these silos have existed um, because that was the management chain, that was the HR structure, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, supply chain, procurement, operations, finance, every, you know, function in the business is part of the value chain, mm-hmm. whether you're delivering a service, whether you're delivering goods, you know, no matter what business you're in, everyone mm-hmm. has to work together cohesively. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it can't be territorial um, and, you know, defining, hey, these, these are my responsibilities in supply chain. I want to make sure we've got the right inventory at the right time. I'm monitoring, you know, all all the aspects and the KPIs associated with that agreement. Whereas Mm -hmm. procurement can look, hey, big picture, here's the marketplace, here's what's available, you know, here's the competitive landscape, um, and really be an ally with supply chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. And now... You know, because now thinking, well, in, you know, well, let me ask you a little, little more specific question. Do you think procurement and supply chain are two separate organizations or are they a part of this or they should be the same organization? <sighs> yeah. Um, you know, my, my two cents, I really do think that they should be um, under the same umbrella um, with, you know, very defined roles and responsibilities. Um, they shouldn't be competitive. Right. Um, you know, you could even bring in, um, you know, warehouse on operations, you know, real estate oftentimes is separate. I feel like all of that should be under the same umbrella. Um, I've seen, you know, different organizations differently, you know, um, but there is having an independent voice and independent lens on a spend category on an opportunity is invaluable um, to every business. And, you know, the sooner that procurement supply chain become your ally, the better off and the more profitable, the the more efficient um, and the more sales and revenue um, organizations will achieve. Yeah, no, absolutely. Let me, let me tack a little bit outside of procurement for a second. And let's look at the world of sort of sustainability and circularity. Mm-hmm. That's a hot topic. Everyone mm-hmm. in supply chain is talking about it. It's also something directly affecting procurement within supply chain, right? Um, there's a lot of new considerations around where people are procuring from. Yeah. There's a reimagining now post pandemic of, you know, where are my sources of uh, goods coming from? Do I have redundancy built into the system? But simultaneously, you know, sustainability, uh, carbon, you know, circularity, that's all kind of big. Where are you seeing that now in both your you know, direct experiences with the companies you're working with, but also how you're thinking about advising organizations to embrace that? Yeah. So, you know, some of our clients um, on the matchbook side are, are looking at, you know, developing kind of this, you know, environmental, social, you know, responsibility, um, commitment, tracking all of that. So it really, it, I'd say it all goes back to what data are you tracking? How are you tracking it? And how is it benefiting your business? Um, so mm-hmm. you have to connect all of these dots. Otherwise, it's just information that you've paid too much for that's sitting <laughs> somewhere and not being, you know, actioned. Mm-hmm. Um, so if, if you're going to take you know, a a formal um, commitment with sustainability, again, design how it's going to fit into the bigger picture. Um, Mm -hmm. How often is it going to be monitored? What does it mean for my business? What does it mean for my shareholders? What what does it mean Mm -hmm. for my employees, my customers? So understand all of that. Um, Mm -hmm. I I do think it it is an, personally, you know, uh, it's important Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's all about, you know, understanding, you know, where products are coming from, where the raw materials are coming from. Um, and, you know, I, I believe in near shore sourcing, um, mm-hmm. you know, the way we've always done it, um, especially here in the U S is broken. Um, and that's right. my personal right. opinion. Um, yeah. I, I think it, it, we've got to be better. Um, we need to become, you know, every comp- 
country in the world needs to become more independent. Um, and of course, we all need to work together. You know, we all bring, you know, different um, value to the table. Um, but, you know, re relying on, you know, everything we get shipped to our front porch from Amazon comes from China. There's a problem there. Um, we, we can't continue to do that. To 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 totally with you. And I think that's, that's, that's it coming out with everybody. And let me di dissect two pieces of this. Cause one you mentioned, which is the source where it comes from, you know, yes. is it ethical? Is it, yes. you know, has it been ethically produced? Is it from, you know, is it not involving, you know, slave labor is an extreme right. example, something of that nature. Carbon emissions, and then, yeah. Yeah, right. But then on the other end now is this trend to start thinking about is what I'm buying at the end of the day, when it's end of life comes around, is it recyclable? Yeah. Right. And that's sort of a, there's two parts to this, but it's it's things that procurement, I don't think is necessarily thought to, as much about. The, 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 the ethical sourcing, yes, but the recyclability is starting to come into focus now too. I could not agree more. And I had a recent conversation with someone in the PPE business, you know, all these nitro gloves, all these masks, all of everything from COVID, where is all of this stuff going? It's mm -hmm. got to be recycled, right? And we have more waste as a result of what everyone has been through in the last two years. And no one has had the foresight that I'm aware of. I've talked to a lot of different people about this. Um, but your point, Richard, is spot on. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you think about the, the product life cycle, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're able to recycle certain things. Um, meanwhile, people are throwing other things, you know, in the garbage um, that very well could be recycled. Um, right. And businesses are usually the largest consumers of, of some of this recyclable material. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really think that, you know, we, a regulation around that would mm -hmm. be worthwhile versus mm -hmm. some of the other things that um, are being prioritized right now. Yeah. Does that come up? Let me, and let me ask specifically, we'll shift over to a top, different topic here in a second, but does that come up in your consulting engagements today, like in the last year, last six months compared to the last few years? You know, where, where do you see the, I'll call it the enthusiasm around those topics with procurement today? Is it, I, I think it's increasing, but tell us what you're seeing in the, in the field. It is growing, but you know, it, it's funny because there has been so much um, that, was unplanned in the last two years that yes, it's a priority, but, you know, getting a product to market or making sure, you know, the supply availability is there. Those then be rise to the top, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of fire drills. So mm -hmm. I'm seeing it as important, mm -hmm. but it gets pushed to the side. Um, I'd say yep. probably yep. more often than it should. And, you know, People don't have enough staff. Procurement and supply chain are always historically understaffed. I see that changing. You know, there are more and more opportunities available, but then there's a shortage of qualified people. Um, but, you know, you make a very valid point. You know, it's where does it fall? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the le leadership has to make it a priority. And it can't just be a check the box. You have to have, you know, right. this full bill of materials. So, you know, you've got the bill of materials from the time that the product ships out the door, but what about everything that went into that product? And then what is, like you said, what does that end of life look like um, right. for everything that it took to produce that product? Correct. Correct. And then also recycle it. So, okay. Awesome. 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 Let me, yep. let me build on that and shift just a little bit, but something that's also a theme that you are very clearly uh, uh, knee deep in is data. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be remiss of me to ask you, right, where you see technology beginning to change mm -hmm. the ideas of procurement and supply chain. I think the central theme is going to be around data for you. But how do you see today's technology 
spectrum of solutions that are emerging both uh, uh, from existing uh, household names like SAP, Oracle, and otherwise, or startups you know like ourselves or others in the space. Like, how do you see tech now coming in and changing procurement and supply chain um, today? And what is what is it doing different that that hasn't been done before? Yeah. So you know, my belief is that it is the innovators that are going to thrive um, from this point forward. Um, it's not going to be the legacy systems um, because they're not agile enough. And I've worked with the legacy systems for over two decades. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, y- you don't turn those ships quickly. Right. So <laughs> with right. that being said, um, you know, I see technology as driving that visibility and that predictive analytics, that proactive um, insights um, across the entire value chain. It's mm-hmm. not just procurement, it's not just supply chain, as I've said you know, a number of times already. Um, breaking down those silos um, and having actionable data. Um, so if you see, right. hey, my margin's slipping on this SKU line or this product line or in this market, um, what do, what can I do versus at quarter stop? Oh shit! I, I didn't meet my targets. Um, so right. you need to have those predictive analytics and um, insights in place. So those check ins. It can't just be an after the fact, you know, um, moment. And then you know you're, you're trying to put band aids on everything. It, it just it doesn't work that way. So that's where I see the future of technology. It's a cohesive environment. Um, so it's very cloud based. Um, it's best of breed. Um, there's not. I don't. I've not seen a one size fits all um, oh, right. for anything, even though that's what's sold um, in many cases. Um, but, you know, when you talk about supplier discovery, supplier qualification, you know, managing the contract, running competitive processes, managing the contracts, spend on contracts, you know, issuing the purchase orders, receiving the payments, all the reconciliation. Um, mm-hmm. I, I see all of those as, you know, a cohesive group of systems that talk to one another and then are able to provide all of those um, predictive data mm-hmm. elements um, mm-hmm. into, you know, operations, into supply chain, into procurement, um, mm-hmm. into sales. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, oftentimes, you know, sales and marketing kind of operate out here um, and then R&D operates, you know, back here and then you've got manufacturing but all of these, you know, pieces need to be tied together. Yeah, totally. So, so let me and, and let me dive a little bit deeper in that one. So, is there a common data theme that you see that it, you know kind of portends success for these types of things? Right? Is there? Because you talk a lot about different data. You talk a lot about data sharing, and you know, you've mentioned centralization, which really at the end of the day is a we'll call it a cloud-based platform is probably the way to go. And we've seen the benefits of that in all the different areas, whether it's Google or Amazon or whatever you want to pick and choose. So that's almost like a foregone conclusion. But if companies now and enterprises are moving to platforms, supply chain platforms of the future, what are the core data elements that you think needs to be kind of the foundation of those structures? Yep. So when focusing on, you know, supply chain procurement, it's, you know, who's available, qualified suppliers that are available, um, what categories they play Mm -hmm. in. Um, Then you get down to the, you know, competitive process. And then you get into the transactional data, the contract data, everything that's reportable, um, invoice data, and then spend on contract. So, you know, I I would break it. You've got the strategic data that, you know, from a supplier perspective and how they're performing, then you've got the transactional um, data. So everything needs to fit together because it all tells, you know, a holistic story. Totally. Totally. A great answer. I mean, it's a great, you know, there's no right, right or wrong answer in this one. I mean, it's just all kind of coming together on the fly as we see it happening right now. 
So now let's let's take a look forward. Let's start looking forward a little bit here. So just tell us a little bit about what you're doing kind of coming out of the pandemic. What is your consulting practice engaging in? Where are you seeing the opportunities for yourself to get in and bring that expertise to these companies? You know, what's what's over the next year or two look like for you and your consulting you know, business? Yeah. So, you know, we can continue to see a lot of demand. Um, biotechs are growing um, by the minute. Right. Um, so, so we're supporting that, um, through the matchbook business. Um, I continue, you know, to grow my consulting business, um, and helping companies sell to and through procurement and supply chain. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really an untapped area. I have a unique lens because I've sat on the other side of the table, um, for over 20 years and I continue to see what the priorities are um, from a procurement mm-hmm. perspective. Um, so I, there's there's just a huge opportunity to change that, that sales churn that exists. Um, so many companies think if I just throw 10 more sales reps, um, I'm gonna close more deals. And that is not the right approach. You really need to change how you are approaching, you know, your clients. Um, stop sending all these emails that just get sent to junk mail, um, and really invest in getting to know the right targets, the right clients, and the best sale is the upsell um, with an existing client. That is the cheapest acquisition you're ever going to get. So you need to invest in those existing relationships. Um, so that's, you know, where I see the future, um, of my business, you know, continuing to, um, help technology companies, um, contract labor companies, um, goods company, anyone selling, um, to enterprise procurement, um, I, I have helped, um, you know, one particular client of mine, their business, um, since engaging me has grown, um, more than 20%. Um, and they, they were, you know, over a half a billion dollar business to begin with. And it has just continued, um, to, to grow. And they brought me in, you know, to, to help with, you know, different relationships that have been on the rocks and where they didn't have a relationship with procurement. So coaching them through that, um, Mm -hmm. and being proactive and, and really tracking the right data. So being that supplier of choice, um, rather than getting spanked, they're invited to proactively, you know, and have a seat at the table and totally. are able to share, hey, here's why we're different. You know, here's totally. our value proposition. And totally. that's the position every supplier should want to be in. Yeah. yeah. No, I did great, great, great answer. Now, let me, let me ask you as you kind of look forward, not only your business, but what do you see trend-wise? What are the things that procurement, supply chain, you know, coming out of this kind of pandemic, what do you see happening over the next couple of years? Like what's going to change dramatically, if anything, and I'm sort of leading question here, but, you know, because clearly supply chain is top of mind, procurement's top of mind, all the things we've talked about and you've experienced are top of mind. People are investing now in, you know, updating the supply chain, in doing things to make the supply chain more effective. They're recognizing the power of supply chain and, 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 and procurement. So what do you see are the trends coming out in the next year or two? Process automation from a manufacturing perspective um, is at the top of the list. Um, You know, optimizing, you know, warehouses, distribution, um, getting, you know, goods, raw materials um, to your customers um, at the right time and Mm -hmm. not days, months, weeks late um, are hypercritical. So, Mm -hmm. I'd say though those are you know the, the top pieces we already talked about from a technology perspective and reporting perspective and, and you know how to optimize kind of an enterprise internally but um, from you know that supply chain optimization though those are the things that are going to change the game yeah. um, going forward and you know getting creative about sources of supply um, not going to who use you've always gone to um, and investing in that automation um, because, you know, we've all seen the poor in LA and um, that is going to cost all of us significantly. And there's a reason why all of those ships are stuck there. Um, And frankly, I don't see that changing, but it's, 
we, we've created that problem sure. on our own. Um, so what do we do about it? Um, yeah. We need to start thinking differently. We need to start acting differently. Um, and that's the future. And I, I think, um, you know, people think, well, it's going to cost more. It's going to, no, it's, I, I really don't believe that. I think, right. you know, maybe there's a quality premium. I'll, I'll pay for a quality premium. Right. Um, but, you know, let's stop making excuses and let's start really thinking about how we can solve this, you know, on shore. Yeah, totally. I, I, I absolutely. I mean, great, great answer. Great way to kind of look at that. And then kind of also now adding in this sort of outlook or prognostication, this crystal ball. So that's kind of what's happening trend wise. What about the people? What's the, what's the professional? If someone's coming into procurement or supply chain today, what's different today? What what you know when you coach or mentor or kind of help people who might be in graduate or undergraduate programs or or whatever, maybe they're yeah. shifting careers. How do you advise them today to be a successful procurement supply chain person? Yeah, I coach them on get it, understand the basics of the operation. Um, you know, because you can get thrown into a category role or a support role. Um, or into a supply chain role, um, but really just understanding how all of the pieces fit together, I think is so incredibly important. Um, you know, I've mentioned the silos before, you know, you've got to think beyond the silos um, and ask the tough questions. Um, I'm a big fan of Six Sigma, you know, ask why five times. Um, and by the third or fourth, you, you might start to get to the root cause. Um, yep. And that's what, you know, I, I think these new um, grads, you know, early hires need to really understand. I, I, I've seen, you know, um, some, some really great um, young hires, and I've seen some that are very, very green um, and that really conform to the corporate way. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, th that's my coaching is, you know, don't, it, is think and act like an owner. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's your business too. Um, and you're ask the tough questions. Don't, mm -hmm. don't back down. Um, well, what about, what about, what, you know, let me shift that. Those are the people coming in. What about the executives that are looking at supply chain and procurement and asking you, what do we need to change? What do we need to do as an organization? How do we structure or possibly restructure ourselves to get the most out of supply chain and procurement? Yep. So, yeah, I think we've hit on a lot of that, um, Richard. But my advice is, you know, you, you've got to get all of those fragmented pieces of data connected. Um, you need to get groups talking to one another. Um, there cannot be sacred cows. Um, there cannot be, we've always done it this way. Right. Um, or it's working fine. You know, I, I'm a believer, you know, there's always a better way to do something, right? There's always a more, a more efficient process or a more, um, you know, a, efficient technology that you can bring in. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, be curious about it, Um right. And ask the tough questions, you know, what are your, inter you know, if the priority is to maximize margins mm -hmm. and minimize OPEX mm -hmm. and um, drive revenue, um, which should be every business's priority, right? If, if you're in business um, and then, you know, make employees part of the process and stop hiring these marquee consulting firms that all they do is come in and ask the same damn questions over and over again and regurgitate what your employees already know. Right. You know, talk to your employees. They have right. the best ideas. They, they see this day in and day out um, and they can solve the most complex and difficult problems that exist within your organizations. Yeah. Talk to them, listen yeah. to them. Yep. Um, because they care, they're employees right. and, you know, you don't have to pay them tens of millions of dollars, um, to get the best ideas and solutions in place. So totally. that's, totally. sorry, that's my rant, but no, 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 it's fabulous. I mean, it's exactly, that's it. I mean, it's a great place to also kind of, you know, wind up a little bit because we've talked a little bit about your you know, future view of the, the industry, future view of kind of roles and people coming into it. And also, you know, to sort of highlighting or nailing the point home that, you know, change is now happening. Supply chain and procurement teams, you know, it's no longer, you know, a conversation. And, and I'm, you know, I was just at the CSCMP uh, conference in Atlanta a week or two ago. 
And yet again, they kind of showed all the standard, you know, like people want to change and embrace technology. And it's like, okay, well, we're past that. Like, what do we do now? What's the roadmap? Let's start talking about what people are doing. Let's get into the tactics of what's actually going to make these changes happen. We know everyone needs to change. We've been talking about that for a few years, right? right? Um, so let's season that opportunity and actually start laying out because there's such commonalities in procurement and supply chain across all these industries. Let's find these commonalities. Let's highlight these to people. Here's like, like, like people are struggling to figure out like, what do I do to start this change management uh, thing? Um, well, here you go. Here's some ideas on how to do it. So like, I mean, you're doing it in the field directly through your consulting practice, but I'm saying there's an even a broader, like just, I don't know, content, messaging, information, whatever that can be put out there. And that's kind of the point of these discussions is to get these this out there so people can see that, hey, you're not alone. There's some common ideas that are happening, no matter the industry, you know, in the role of supply chain and, and procurement. Um, and, and you know, you, you should be learning from each other. Like you said, you should be talking, collaborating, right? Opening up and sharing. I mean, that's how, that's why open source software beat closed source software, right? Uh, is the whole concept of, you know, collaboration and, and open standards, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that's my rant. <laughs> you get me going. Yeah, yeah, I can go. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes, Richard, we overcomplicate things. Executives oh. overcomplicate things. Oh, Amen. <laughs> get back to the basics, frankly, right. Um, right. of what it takes, why you're in business, what's important. You know, something I learned a long time ago. I don't even know who the consultant was, but it it has stuck with me for over 20 years. But it was this MBF concept and it was management by fact. And it was a four quadrant, you know, measuring categories, me measuring operational efficiency, you know, you, you can, you know, break down any aspect of the business, but managing it to those KPIs, um, and it makes perfect sense to me, um, and you don't need a 20-slide deck, a 50-slide deck, whatever it is, um, get it on a couple slides and get these metrics and, right. you know, track it. And it can't be smoke and mirrors, you know, stop trying to tell the story you want to hear and it's going to get ugly, you know, and ugly is okay. But if you want to change, um, you need to know the truth about yep. what's actually going on within yep. your organization. Yep. Totally. Totally. Well, listen, that's a, that's a great thing to kind of wind up on. I really appreciate your time today. It was an incredible conversation, like like all of this. And, you know, an hour goes by in a blink of an eye. So, uh, uh, so much to talk about. So much. Thank you for your insights for that. But really, thank you so much for today. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Been a pleasure. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. This is Richard Donaldson. Thanks for listening. If you have any comments about the episode or topics in supply chain you'd like us to explore, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at supplychainnext at requis.com. And while you're at it, why not check out the Request platform at supplychain.request.com. Request allows you to manage the full asset lifecycle in the cloud, collaborating with your entire value network to buy, manage, and sell your assets. Find out more at www.request.com.